China claims sovereignty over the self-ruled island 160 kilometers away and has not dropped the threat of force, if needed, to capture it. The two sides including China and Taiwan have been separately ruled since the Chinese Civil War of the 1940s. Beijing claims Taiwan as a province of China and has vowed to retake it, by force if necessary, and accuses its democratically elected government of being separatists. On the other hand, Taiwan's government says it is a sovereign nation with no need to declare independence. Recently there are many incursions of PLA fighter planes in the Taiwanese air defense identification zone. And on China's National Day, Taiwan reported 148 Chinese Air Force planes in the southern and southwestern parts of its ADIZ. The invasion of Taiwan involved landing of PLA troops on its beach, and Chinese tanks would also be the part of invasion. In this video, we will see what type of threats Chinese tanks will bear in operation against Taiwan. The first threat Chinese tanks would face will not be from anti-tank weapons but from anti-ship missiles of Taiwanese military. Those will target vessels that will be carrying these tanks. The Taiwanese military would need to sink half of the attacking ships. But sinking potentially hundreds of vessels would require an arsenal of no fewer than 1200 anti-ship missiles. Taipei announced it would spend $2.4 billion buying ground-launched 100-mile range harpoon missiles from US defense firm Boeing. Those 400 harpoons, fired by 100 truck-mounted quad launchers supported by 25 mobile radars, would grow the Taiwanese anti-ship missile arsenal by half to 1200 rounds. Further, there are also locally made Sung Fong 2 and Sung Fong 3 missiles and older harpoon models that would make up the balance. Assuming each missile has between a 50% and 70% chance of hitting its target, and also assuming Chinese bombardment destroys or suppresses a significant number of launchers, those 1200 missiles should be sufficient to sink hundreds of Chinese ships and stop an invasion attempt cold, if Taiwan calculations are sound. After successfully landing on beach next threat Chinese tanks will face from Taiwanese AH-1 Super Cobra and AH-64E Apache Guardian attack helicopters. Both these gunships are capable of firing Hellfire missiles. There are 62 Cobra gunships and 29 Apaches in service. Hellfire is an air-to-ground, laser-guided, subsonic missile with significant anti-tank capacity. It can also be used as an air-to-air -air weapon against helicopters or slow-moving fixed-wing aircraft. In air-to-ground mode, it provides precision striking power against tanks, structures, bunkers, and helicopters. The Hellfire missile is capable of defeating any known tank in the world today. It can be guided to the target either from the gunship or by lasers outside the aircraft. Further, Hellfire 2 can lock onto targets before or after launch for increased platform survivability. For anti-armor roles, this missile is equipped with a conical-shaped charge warhead with a copper liner cone forming the jet for armor penetration. The high explosive, shaped charge and blast fragmentation warhead are effective against applique and reactive armor. Operational range of Hellfire is up to 11 kilometers. If PLA air defenses are enough to keep Taiwanese attack helicopters away from its armor, the next challenge will be from Taiwanese tanks. Then it would be armor versus armor, and in that domain, Chinese tanks are far more advanced than Taiwanese armor currently in service. Taiwanese army on paper possesses around a thousand tanks, 460 American-made M60A3+, around 450 CM11s, and at last count a hundred or so CM12s. The CM-11 pairs a modified M48 turret with an M60 chassis. The CM-12 is an M48 with the same modified turret as the CM-11. The latest, the M60 dates from the 1970s. These tanks are obsolete when compared to advanced Chinese Type 99 and Type 96 MBTs. But still, these machines pose a serious threat to PLA mechanized columns. Although Taiwan has contracted for M1A2T tanks from US, these vehicles are yet to be delivered. Taiwan ordered 108 Abrams tanks, which would be delivered in four batches between 2023 and 2026. M1A2T tanks are a variant of M1A2 SEPV2, which are specially customized for Taiwanese army requirements. Equipped with a series of enhancements, the SEP or System Enhancement Package version has better survivability in the war zone. It could also use different types of fuels like military-grade jet fuel and diesel.
While fighting with upgraded older generation Taiwanese tanks, PLA armor would find themselves in a difficult situation from Taiwan self-propelled artillery units. Taiwan currently operates M110 and M109 US origin self-propelled guns. There are 60 M110 in service and 200 M109 units of A2, A4, and A5 variants. In 2019 Taiwan also ordered A6 variants of M109 from US. These SPGs are of serious concern for PLA as they have shoot and scoot capability. M109 has an effective firing range of 30 km if rocket-assisted projectile. After passing through all hurdles PLA tank will face another threat, that is from Taiwanese anti-tank missiles, which would be carried either by infantry or vehicles. Their Humvees and armor personnel carriers are equipped with tow missiles. Further, Taiwan has deployed some 400 locally made Kestrel anti-tank missiles around key government installations. This missile launcher is a disposable, shoulder-launched, single-shot system that can fire a high-explosive anti-tank warhead or a high-explosive squash head. Taiwanese Army is also using RAC-112 Apla's anti-tank missiles which is a portable one-shot 112mm recoilless anti-tank weapon. Taiwan has also ordered FGM-148 Javelin missiles from US in 2017. Javelin is a portable fire and forget missile with automatic infrared guidance. The projectile can hit tanks from above, where they are most vulnerable. The weapon is usually handled by a team of two soldiers, one to carry the ammunition and one to fire the device, which can also target helicopters. In conclusion, Chinese tanks will not be alone in the campaign, their armor will be supported by gunships, air defense, mechanized infantry, and other supporting arms. Other options China could use to bring Taiwan to its knees without invasion, includes blockade or targeted missile attacks with ballistics and cruise missiles. Further Taiwanese defense will also not be in sequential order of attacking. There will be coordinating operations against PLA invasion. In addition, US and Japanese military bases are close to Taiwan, and any Chinese attack would necessarily be closely monitored, plus it would need to reserve forces to prevent foreign military intervention. It all depends upon which side will use its forces effectively.